All righty, so we're gonna get started. Uh, I have the pleasure of introducing Robert Wagner. Uh, he is the security strategist at Splunk with over 15 years of experience. He is also the co-founder of Hack for Kids Conference, which is dedicated to exposing young minds to the communal benefits of ethical research, mentorship, and responsible hacking. He is also co-founder of BurbCon, BurbSecCon yep. in Chicago, an informational security meetup network for informational security professionals, <coughs> researchers, researchers, and enthusiasts. Uh, so today he will be presenting a talk titled, Is Artificial Intelligence Going to Throw Us Off a Cliff or Give Us the Wings to a Vault? So if you all would also take a moment to silence your electronic devices, that would be very much appreciated. Mm -hmm. But feel free to tweet with the hashtag Dawn or Doom while this is going on. And thank you and enjoy. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, so yes, I, I, I do do all those things. Uh, I started off uh, my career in InfoSec in the Security Operations Center of some financials in downtown Chicago. Uh, moved my way up through uh, engineer and architect of those security systems. Uh, and now uh, work at another company. So. Um, uh, it is Mr. Minion on the Twitters. I don't tweet a whole lot, but it is good for comms if you need to get a hold of me. And I'm not a data scientist, um, not anywhere even close. So why the hell am I here, right? Um, so um, I'm here mostly because InfoSec has problems, lots of problems. Uh, and uh, as a person that's trying to solve those problems, of course, um, machine learning and artificial intelligence is one of the things that I've been looking into, that my company's been looking into, uh, to try and solve security problems. But to date, yeah, InfoSec sucks. We do terrible, terrible. When I look at uh, 1,500, uh, almost uh, 1,600 breaches in 2017 with, um, yeah, 178, almost 179 million records stolen. And those records, by the way, were your records. It's information about you guys. Um, they're coming after you, and they're coming after you hard. So, uh, so how can we uh, fix the problem is, uh, is much of the work that I do. It's not what I'm going to be talking about here, uh, but it's why they came to me. So Don and, uh, oh yeah, that's how bad the problem is. is um, everybody's asking if AI will solve all the InfoSec problems. And it's, it's really kind of almost an immature question, right? Does, does AI solve anything just perfectly right away? Is it a magic button for anything? No, but people constantly go, oh, well, it's a magic button for this, isn't it? And it's not. It's, uh, it's, it's quite terrible. Uh, there's a great XKCD cartoon about how well algorithms have been solving our problems to date. Um, but uh, when, when Dawn or Doom actually came to me and, and said, hey, will you, will you present at, uh, at our conference? I said, well, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, I can talk at least a little bit about what I've been seeing. Um, and in fact, um, I, I had a great idea to, uh, to involve a, a good friend of mine as well. Um, so uh, so uh, he's a hacker. He looks like this. Um, and, uh, and just the, I mean, so he's a mountain of a man. I mean, he's huge. Um, so just the visual contrast of having him here would have been fantastic. Unfortunately, he had a family issue spring up just last week. Otherwise, he would have been here. Uh, he's, uh, he's from out of Scotland and, uh, and just couldn't make it. So, uh, so this is Cy Dragon, uh, is his hacker handle, uh, Chris Roberts. Um, he's freaking amazing. Um, Cy has hacked uh, as part of his job into a good number of things, including the Mars rover, um, airplanes, trains, tractors. And that doesn't sound like a very scary thing. You should be terrified about hacking into tractors. Because if he can hack into tractors, bad guys can hack into tractors. And it would be as simple as instructing the tractor to plant either one inch too deep or too shallow. And he could ruin pretty much all of the production and food in the US for the next year, because you would miss your planting season. Um, and it would be devastating, absolutely devastating. So, uh, so that's how scary our world is. So, uh, so I thought, well, let's talk a little bit about what that means within this whole AI and machine learning place space. Um, so uh, so you know, both of us are super paranoid. We were going to do a little point and counterpoint in discussing uh, the, the dawn or doom of all of this, uh, uh, but uh, we won't quite get that banter. But we will, we will get into a lot of that. Uh, so, uh, so why would it be important? Well, yeah. Um, I went to a conference, uh, I think it was around 2009, 2010. And there was a, a presenter there. Uh, he was uh, originally from like Bell Labs. Uh, he was working at Bell back when, who, who's heard of phone freaking? 
Yeah, right. So phone freaking was a, a way to go ahead and get free phone calls. And the, uh, the, the vulnerability that it leveraged was the fact that uh, back then um, you had in-band signaling, right? Uh, if every, anybody that has ever used a payphone remembers, when you put the coins in, you used to hear that little sound. That little sound was what indicated to the phone that you had paid. Um, and, and carried it down the line and told the CEO, the, the central office, that you had put money in. Well, you could play that sound into the phone and get free phone calls that way. Uh, and nobody thought that that could ever happen, right? Nobody ever imagined that someone would use that to uh, pervert the system, right? To abuse the system. And if nobody thought that with those things, oh my God, what a, you know, where, where are we going? So um, his quote. Uh, during that talk was, was amazing. He said, in the, in the history of, at least his knowledge, of hackers and hacker space, never once had the hacker community been wrong about whether or not they could hack particular systems. And, and look at what, I mean, look at the more modern things, right? They're hacking cars, they're hacking trains, tractors, medical devices, ATMs, anything you can imagine. Um, voting systems, uh, this year at DEF CON, which is uh, one of the largest hacker cons, if not the largest hacker con, uh, they have a kids track. It's called Roots. Uh, and in the kids track, 11-year-olds uh, were hacking into voting systems, simulated voting systems with using the exact same hardware that they're using out today, um, if you have electronic voting systems uh, in this area. Um, and, uh, and they were do, able to do it quite easily. And we'll talk just a little bit about how they do it. Uh, so to my knowledge, since seeing that presentation, I think this still holds true. I don't think the hacker community has ever said, we can probably hack that, and they've been wrong. So scary. So what are they saying about our space, right? Oh, I think that was Matt Blaze, by the way. I tried to go back and search for the, uh, the archive. I couldn't find it, but I'm pretty sure Matt Blaze was a researcher that said that. So um, our idea was to, to kind of compare this against what the media has been throwing at us, right? What's the media has been throwing at us? I mean, since 1927 with Metropolis, uh, we've had this dystopian image of, of AI and what's it going to do to us, right? And, uh, and throughout, uh, throughout um, the, the whole history of, uh, of the, the media that we've been presented with, it's lots and lots of lots of dystopian future. So where, oh, yeah, I'll get it, yep. Where are we right now? Um, and, uh, and we thought about this a long time, Chris and I. We were like, well, you know, they, they, there seems to be potential for a lot of good. There seems to be potential for a lot of bad. Where, where do we measure up? Where are we against the machines? And we think it's right about here. Um, we're, uh, we think we're about right at the edge. Um, uh, a, a lot of people uh, that we talk to are telling us that we're probably uh, thinking about what to do about the potential misuse about five years too late already. So we're, we're pretty damn, does any, is anybody super sensitive like smaller swear words like damn and stuff? Like, yeah. um, if, if you are, raise your hand, I won't, but um, I'm so used to talking to hackers and you know, swearing's an art form. Uh, so. Um, uh, so that's where we think we are. Um, so just some quick explanations, because I was told that I'd have a whole range of an audience here. People that are familiar with AI, um, all the way to people who this is absolutely new to. So regular programming, right? The, the applications that we deal with today, which is hackers are already good at hacking that stuff. Um, whoops, sorry. So it's kind of like this. You tell A to go to B, and A goes to B. That's pretty much uh, regular programming. In machine learning, um, we, uh, we tell A, you need to get to B, we give it some parameters, and then it walks around like a drunk until it finds it, right? It just, it, it somehow or another gets over to B, finally learns its way over there. We, we make sure it doesn't like fall off the stage or whatever. Uh, but eventually A does get to B by figuring it out on its own. Um, and then with artificial intelligence, we're telling A to go to B, and B's like, yeah, but B smells. I don't want to go over to B. Um, or, uh, or maybe I should just convince B to come over to me. Is, is that okay? Um, that's the kind of artificial intelligence we're working towards. Uh, we, we really haven't achieved anything that looks like that yet, but, but that's, that's the goal, right? To get something that acts like a human, um, to, uh, or more than a human even. Uh, so uh, so if, if that's the, the general purpose goal, and, um, and uh, most people are referring to that as general artificial intelligence, right? Um, things that can not only learn, but apply that knowledge to something outside of the domain that they've been taught to learn in. Um, so this, uh, this artificial intelligence will have its own goals, will plan, will learn, will correct itself. Uh, and, uh, and is that good? Is that bad? There's well, a lot of potential for both, right? Um, so as, as, as I was taking a look at the general artificial intelligence stuff, yeah, obviously a lot of people talk about the singularity, right? Uh, the singularity is 
uh, when that general artificial intelligence um, starts, uh, and basically an explosion, it, it literally would be an explosion like a chemical or nuclear reaction of intelligence where it's improving itself on, um, on uh, geometrically faster um, cycles uh, to, to improve itself. Um, it's been pros proposed by many, including Hawking and Musk, uh, that it will be the end of us all. Um, and that's some pretty scary stuff for sure. Um, and I, you know, I, I looked at it and I'm like, eh, well, what are the possible outcomes? Yeah, certainly this, and yeah, us ending up like that, yeah, I could see that happen easily, absolutely. Um, where, uh, well, the question is, is whether or not the AI would be this benefactor, this uh, custodian that takes care of us. Yeah, I don't know about that, but that's definitely likely for us. Um, because we're going to get lazy. Uh, or maybe we're just going to be really good pets, right? Maybe the AI is going to, uh, as it gets smarter and smarter, is just going to simply say, oh, well, aren't you cute? You're just the cutest little thing. I'm going to keep you around. You're a little entertaining. That'll be awesome. Um, yeah. Hello. Yeah. Uh, so obviously, this is a possible outcome. I'm thinking even less likely. Um, not, from, not, from, uh, not from a singularity, not from a super intelligence. And the reason why I think that is is because it's a freaking super intelligence. I, is it going to even acknowledge that we exist when it gets that smart? <sighs> I'm, I'm thinking probably not. Maybe, uh, maybe it might notice us getting in its way in the beginning. But for goodness sake, I mean, the, the, the way that it's described and the way that it would happen so incredibly fast, I mean, days maybe, weeks for it to achieve an intelligence so advanced that we are so insignificant as, I mean, some people say ants. I think it's even less than ants. I think it's like a moat of dust floating around in the air. You're, it's just, I don't think it's going to notice us anymore. Um, so not as likely. There's some potential there. Maybe, maybe we're just good, uh, you know, like the matrix. Maybe we're just good batteries for it or something like that. Um, but, uh, but why? I mean, if you were an AI and you were that smart, couldn't you just come up with your own solar-powered something or other that's absolutely perfect? I mean, we're talking infinite intelligence here. Infinite intelligence. I, I, I don't think it's going to care about us. Um, so, uh, and, and certainly, uh, as far as how it deals with us and the planet and everything else, well, it would be able to run as many simulations as it wanted to to get it right, right? I mean, it could just go through all the iterations of everything possible and figure that out. So, eh, I, I don't know so much about that. Um, and, and how does a hacker view a super intelligence? Well, well you can't hack it because it's smarter than you. Um, however, it can be used for some fear, uncertainty, and doubt. We can certainly do some fear mongering with that, right? Get people afraid of stuff. Because what's so great about getting people really afraid about things? They start making laws that maybe they shouldn't have made. They start reacting in ways that they probably shouldn't react. It's really, really easy to propagate misinformation when people are afraid. If I was a hacker and I wanted certain outcomes, yeah, I'd, I'd go that route. I'd start trying to make people afraid of it. Um, so, uh, so I think the general AI problem is a ways off. Some people are saying decades. Some people are saying longer than that. I don't know. We should be preparing for it no matter what. Although, honest to God, what could we really prepare for at the end of the day, right? I mean, there's nothing you can do. Um, but how about domain-specific AI? Because I think that's a bigger, a bigger problem. Domain-specific AI, as opposed to general artificial intelligence, is AI with a particular job to do, right? Um, we're, we're using AI all over the place. You're seeing it. This is, uh, this is some of the stuff that's finding things like uh, identifying cancer properly and, uh, and could possibly help us modify the genomes so that we don't get sick anymore or grow wings and fly or whatever that's going to be. Um, and, and that's certainly some amazing stuff. Uh, it's not likely to become self-aware, the odds of a domain specific, because it can't apply what it learns to other domains. Uh, it hasn't been taught how to do that. It doesn't know how to do that. Unless there's like some major mutation of that AI, I don't think it's going to become self-aware. I don't think it's going to try to escape. Or even if it does, I, look, so this is more like the AI that we see in animals, right? Um, an, an octopus is a great great escape artist, but once an octopus escapes from its aquarium, does it really wreak havoc on it? No, it just it dies. So, um, so I don't think that we're going to have too many problems with it escaping, at least not to start. Um, it won't modify the way it replicates unless we tell it to, and that's starting to get really scary. That's becoming a scary reality, um, and it, uh, it, it really isn't going to apply things outside of that. So, um, so current AI, what does it do? It, it performs mundane tasks. Um, possibly even um, more skilled tasks. 
um, increases agricultural yields, which is really awesome until I actually hack that AI and then tell it to do the complete opposite and ruin our uh, agricultural yields. You know, a lot of people are saying doom around the, the mundane tasks thing. People will lose their jobs. Yeah, they're going to lose their jobs. Uh, but in, in many of the discussions I've heard uh, over the last few days, um, people are worried about the people that are losing their jobs and saying, well, this has happened in every industrial um, evolution. And that's true. The thing I haven't heard a lot of people saying is that in every industrial revolution, there have been people that have been abused. And I'm far more concerned about that. What I really want to see is us be smart this time and make sure that these displaced workers have cheap ways to learn a new skill. That's going to be crucial in getting past part of that. People will lose their jobs. Let's just make sure that it isn't you know, a, a, a dumpster fire when it happens. Um, uh, financial uh, investing and automating that financial investing. Very, very powerful stuff. How many people here have access to an algorithm to do your investing for you? Yeah? Awesome. Uh, there's only, a, and, and is, it, is it one of the more advanced ones? Right. Um, and would you do better if you were actually able to move closer to the or origination of the signal, uh, further to the central office or something like that? Yeah, there are people that are paying millions of dollars to move six blocks just to be able to do a transaction milliseconds faster. Um, that doesn't sound like leveling the playing field to me. That sounds like People getting, you know, only the rich getting richer on that one. Um, and speaking of leveling the playing field, I mean, wasn't that what the internet was going to be in the first place? I'm, how many people, uh, you know, used to hear, oh yeah, the internet's going to level the playing field. Um, in, instead, what we're seeing a lot of is um, a bigger and bigger gap in uh, in uh, inequality of uh, income, um, and and that's scary. And and AI could probably even help us with that if we allow it to. Uh, the the problem I'm seeing with a whole lot of these things is. Uh, AI will help us if we allow it to, and it makes money for someone. Um, and, uh, and there's a lot of different ways you can make money. You can do it as a corporation. Um, you can do it as a hacker by stealing it from people. Uh, but um, but I, I, I hear a whole bunch of good ideas this week um, about what we could be doing with AI. And I wonder how much of it will be implemented if it's not financially beneficial um, to whoever's going to fund that. And that again, scares me, because there's a ton of good, good we could be doing right now. Um, so, uh, but, uh, but within the whole uh, domain-specific AI uh, area, I, I see this as probably the most likely place for things to go wrong. I see the most uh, potential for abuse here. Um, I certainly see a lot of fallibility. Uh, you, if you've been hanging around some of the other sessions, you've been hearing a lot about things like bias, uh, other things like that, the, the, the failability of the machines, the failability of the engineers themselves, uh, and then just the pure ethics and morality of what we're proposing to do. So, uh, so let's talk a little bit about some of those things. Um, they, so, uh, so really and truly, the, probably the most powerful digital currency right now is not Bitcoin, it's not anything like that, it's data. And again, it's your data. Um, it is more valuable than anything else out there. And people, some people, will do almost anything to get it. Um, hackers uh, steal data all the time by breaking in your systems. Um, uh, there's uh, uh, crypto miners now that uh, all the hackers are trying to do is just get your browser to mine Bitcoin for them. Um, sometimes even just temporarily, the moment you close your browser and uh, uh, it, it stops and it doesn't happen again because it was only loaded into memory. Um, but it's very clever uh, and, uh, and a very victimless way to start trying to make money for yourself, right? Um, corporations uh, and other entities tend to use some more subtle tactics, um, including passing laws about uh, whether your data is yours or not. Um, who here has heard of GDPR? Yeah, a, a couple. So um, for the rest of you, what GDPR is, is um, it's uh, uh, a, 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 some laws that were enacted in, um, in the uh, EU uh, that basically say that we are the owners of our own data and we have complete rights over it. Literally meaning that if you decided to quit Facebook, you call Facebook up or email them and say, delete my account, and they have to. They have to delete the whole thing. They have to get rid of every freaking trace of your data that is on their systems. Can we do that as US citizens? No. Why are we third class citizens on our own freaking internet? I mean, really, why? I mean, we invented the freaking thing, and we can't get rid of it. Who wants to guess why? Yeah, again, it's money. There's too much money to be made in your data. So, and, and we let them. We let them freaking walk all over us. We, we can't 
get together well enough to enact laws uh, as, as, good as, um, as good as GDPR. And meanwhile, uh, they're violating the, um, the data rights of uh, European citizens, and they're getting fined left and right um, for, for those violations. So they really suck at it, too. Um, uh, uh, they suck at protecting your data. Uh, so uh, um, there's laws that continue to be passed, uh, making it uh, easier and easier for your data to be got by any uh, legal entity um, if they don't just sell it outright to whoever wants it, right? Um, that, as we saw with uh, Facebook and, uh, and the whole Cambridge Analytica thing. Um, anybody can buy your data. Uh, and, and we've seen this before. So there was a time when you could not get your credit report at all. The only time you could even see it is when you applied for a loan and the bank loan officer would go, here's your, here's your, right, okay, yeah, okay, and then that was it. You couldn't take it with you, you couldn't leave with it, uh, you didn't have a smartphone so you couldn't take a picture of it. That was the only way you could see what your credit score was. And of course that was used to, um, to uh, create bias in, in loans, right? Certain people would not get the loans and certain people would. Um, and, uh, and people got sick enough of it that they said no. This is data about us. We have absolutely the right to get it. And it took years, years to get that right passed. Um, and, and now we're giving it away again. We're letting them take it away from us. Um, uh, this, uh, this whole thing about net neutrality. Um, again, my, in my hacker mind, if you want to get to the truth of anything, follow the money, right? I mean, you hear that in everything in politics. Um, why might net, net, net neutrality have been so important to certain people to get rescinded, right? because it's worth a lot of power and a lot of money, a lot. I mean, again, it is the most powerful digital currency right now, and giving it away freely to anybody that can pay for it, kind of scary. Um, there's a, speaking of scores, there's now a company that will sell your social media score. So they will go out and take a look at all of your social media and create a score for you that a, hiring, that a loan officer could get, but more likely a hiring manager could purchase and get your social media score they will not sell you your own social media score. You cannot access it at all. They will even take your calls. Yeah, you should be mad. You should be really mad. Um, so, um, uh, so, uh, so yeah, I, I think, uh, I think uh, getting rid of net neutrality was a way to give people who have deep pockets access to deep in their pockets. Um, but, uh, but what about bias in this whole system, right? Bias data um, is going to equal bias systems. Somebody else uh, earlier today mentioned uh, uh, Tay AI. Did, did, did most of folks hear about Tay AI? Yeah, so Tay AI was a, a project by Microsoft. They put a Twitter bot out there and they said, hey everybody, it's a Twitter bot. Go ahead and interact with it. Um, in less than 24 hours, it was spewing all sorts of hate talk. And, and, and people, yeah, it was terrible. I mean, yeah, Hitler was right. And people were trolling it on purpose. They were trying to purposely teach it hate to get this, this uh, result out of it. And guess what? It worked. And it worked really fast. Um, so uh, in addition, who's going to decide? The, so AI, when you teach it, it has learning incentives, right? There's some sort of incentive. Um, when they, they taught it how to play uh, 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 Mario Brothers, all they did was say, here's the score. Your incentive is you got to get the score up as high as you can. And the machine learned how to play Mario Brothers just by trying to get its score up. Well, that's great. but Right now, the industry is dominated by white males. Um, there's only about 12% female right now in the industry as of 2017. When I was talking to Side Dragon about this, I was just like, well, if, if anything, the smart thing to do would protect us from uh, evil AI would be just make sure that all the developers are women, right? I mean, it won't be perfect, but it might give us a little bit of protection to, uh, to, to have that kind of influence on something that is going to be quasi-sentient. Um, and then who the hell is going to teach the AI about everybody else, about everybody else's experience? How does, how does it understand the experience of different people as it learns how to react with those people? Um, some very heavy questions. I don't know the answers for this. Uh, but there have been some good presentations this week about it. So, uh, so go watch the videos if you haven't seen them. Um, uh, come on. Yeah, baby. So, so how to avoid automation bias? Um, so automation bias is a type of bias. Um, so uh, this AI is classifying things, and it classified this, ob to us, pretty obviously a husky uh, as a wolf. How many people saw husky right away when, when this came up? Yeah, pretty easy for us. Um, wasn't so easy for the AI, but they didn't know why. So they actually wrote another program to make it explain itself. 
and why it thought that this was a husky. And this was its explanation. Yeah, um, so you can't tell right away, but what it's focusing on mostly is the snow. And it was trained uh, about wolves using only pictures with snow in the background. So it saw snow and said, well, this is obviously a wolf, right? Yeah. So <laughs> can these kind of things be fixed? Sure. But the, 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 the main thing here is, is that we need to teach the machines to explain stuff to us. Um, there was a talk just uh, earlier this afternoon where maybe that's not always so easy. And that's scary if, if, the, if the machine can't explain to us why it got to that decision. And they even postulated, well, does it even need to if it's pretty accurate? Eh, maybe not. Uh, I'm the kind of person I still want to know. Um, but maybe other people really want to know too. Because um, if it's identifying uh, a firearm as a helicopter, um, maybe that could be used by more, more nefarious people than myself to trick uh, surveillance systems into thinking that it's just a harmless helicopter instead of a harmful rifle? I, I don't know, um, but, it, but it gets worse. Um, Compass is a system used by, in, I think in 14 states right now, um, for sentencing people. And all Compass does is it goes through and it tries to decide whether or not you're likely to commit a crime again. That's all it does, yep. Um, and uh, uh, it was, you know, Whoever their salespeople were, were awesome because it's pretty shitty. Um, uh, it got things, it, so first off, um, it was no better predicting an individual's risk of recidivism than random volunteers. Now, if you came to a judge and said, hey, we've got this super smart system, it'll, it'll try to figure out whether or not this is, person's likely to be a repeat offender. And you came to that same judge and you said, I got 20 people that I picked by random off the internet and they're going to vote on whether or not this person will likely commit a crime again, which is the judge probably going to believe? Yeah, the judge is probably going to believe the advanced system, and that's a little bit about this automation uh, bias. We, we are too willing to outsource our morality to machines that we'll start letting them make decisions for us and not question it, and that is scary. Um, that's, that's scary in all sorts of things. You, even with the cancer thing, if, the, if it decides that it's uh, not cancer, Will a doctor go off his gut instinct and just go, no, I still think there's something wrong. I want to double check. Or is the doctor going to go, well, the machine said. Yeah, scary. Um, but in addition, Compass is just really awful. Um, so it got lots of things wrong. Um, blacks were almost twice as likely as whites to be uh, labeled as a higher risk and then not commit a second crime or, or reoffend. Um, and whites were much more likely than blacks to be labeled as low risk and then go on and commit uh, another crime. So, and this is the best part. None of the defendants were allowed to inspect the source code of the system to see how it was coming to its decision. And again, this is us just letting people say no when we should have the rights to data, especially data about ourselves. Um, and we know these systems can be audited, right? We, we, we saw it back here. These systems can be audited for the most part, especially one that sucks so bad it doesn't uh, do any better than a bunch of random people from the internet. Um, so, uh, so we need to do that. Um, even worse, uh, so police departments are starting to use predictive policing. So uh, the system tries to pre predict where there's going to be crime so that, uh, so that the police can go there and stop the crime. Unfortunately, what it really ends up doing is predicting whether or not police will detect crime in a certain area based on their history of detecting crime in that area. You, know, you can kind of see where this is going, right? Um, that, that doesn't really help you much. Um, and in fact, uh, in the article that I read on this, uh, it really could be used to, um, to start uh, using uh, lower rates of coercion and other things like that. But the police aren't using it for that. They're just going there and writing more tickets and making more arrests. They haven't changed their behavior whatsoever. So we keep being told that AI can help us be better at what we do. And again, all I hear is lazy. That's all I'm hearing right now. We're back to Wally, -E, right? Let's just get lazy about the things we do. And the CIA is saying it can predict uh, social unrest uh, maybe up to five days ahead. Sounds like it could be valuable right until we're talking badly about the CIA and they want to predict whether or not we're going to be talking badly about the CIA and then I'm worried again. Yeah. Uh, so. Uh, so a hacker view of all of this AI that I just said. Um, so again, going by all the way back to that quote, pretty much all software can be hacked. Sooner or later, if it's accessible, 
it can be hacked, and guess what, it will be hacked. Is anybody actually writing uh, AI or code for AI right now? Um, is, yeah, um, or, or, and or collecting data? Yeah, they're coming for you. They are coming for your intellectual property. They are coming for the data that you hold, anything they can get their hands on. That's gonna be hackers, that's gonna be nation states. Anybody that wants a shortcut for, uh, for power uh, and things that are power, have powerful effects, they're gonna be gunning for you. Um, uh, and developers just continue to allow a fault in their code. A really good example, um, first appeared in 1998, uh, it's called SQL injection. Uh, for those of you who haven't heard SQL injection, uh, it's, uh, it's most commonly used on websites that present you with a form uh, and call data off of a back-end database. Um, and if they're not doing certain things correctly, I can issue SQL commands and do all sorts of stuff. I can get it to dump the whole database. I can put data in there that doesn't belong there. And what does that do to the Compass sentencing system if I want to make sure that someone gets sentenced for a long time? Um, there's all sorts of ways you can mess with these systems if there's data involved. And people say, yeah, but you know, Hadoop's no SQL, right? Yeah, you're still screwed. Um, you can still get in, uh, Hadoop is still susceptible to code injection and schema injection as well, and quite easily. And that is actually what the kids that hacked into the voting systems used uh, at DEF CON. All they did was a little SQL injection, uh, gained access to the database, changed the voting record. They changed what, who was voted for in those systems. Um, so, uh, so, what is, yeah, so what does that mean? Yeah, so skewing, skewing the results of algorithms by putting data in there uh, that make the outcomes what you want it to be. Um, it, uh, it could affect loan systems, hiring systems, trading systems. The market right now is definitely being messed with right now uh, uh, for, by algorithms and people messing with those algorithms and the agricultural systems that we mentioned before. Um, uh, so uh, the AI by it can also just help the hackers out. So hackers will certainly leverage anything they can within those systems, but AI by itself is being used as a weapon by hackers. Uh, so evading detection uh, of you know, standard things like antivirus, uh, uh, intrusion detection systems, things like that, uh, the, uh, it, it, AI helps them move around faster, it helps evade. Um, one of the new technologies that they're trying to bring out in the InfoSec space is called UBA, User Behavior Analytics. Um, uh, and, and it's wonderful, I suppose. Uh, it tries to watch user behavior and then uh, try and figure out if that behavior is malicious, if someone's hacked into systems and is now trying to steal data from you. Attackers are using UBA to look at user behavior and make sure their mal malicious code acts like users' behavior. Yeah, so this is a total game of whack-a-mole. Um, they, are, they are using our own technology against us. They are better, they're faster, they're more agile, and they're usually better funded. Um, they, uh, they are gonna latch on to any technology that helps them do their job better and use it better than us most of the time. Um, there's smarter malware, malware that's figuring out how to hide how to obfuscate itself, um, uh, not only just with the UBA thing, but uh, in, in any ways to make it look like innocuous code. Um, hive nets, um, ways for uh, malware to work together, just kind of like uh, some of the swarm stuff you've seen for AI. Um, malware can swarm as well, uh, pick out um, uh, targets, uh, move more agilely than the, the manual defenses uh, that are usually in place, and start self-learning um, how to create attacks that the attackers might not have even thought of. Um, in fact, uh, it's becoming really, really good at social engineering people. It used to be when you got a letter, uh, uh, you know, a phishing attempt, um, if it was written by a non-English speaker, you could probably figure it out. There was just something wrong about the sentence structure, something wrong about the words they used, and you're like, yeah, 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 that, that's phishing, you know, delete. Um, they're so good now that in a, in a competition between an AI and a human to fish people, the AI was successful in tweeting to about 800 users and lured 275 victims. The, the uh, human only got about 49 victims to click on the link, which is still awful. What the hell are you people doing? Um, uh, there's, and there's ways that we can help you with that too, with the InfoSec community. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, they're, they're already better at phishing us through written communications. How soon 
before they're better at us than verbal communications um, on, on actually social engineering people through a phone call. Uh, in fact, um, oh God, and, and we got to start, we, see, we're so far behind. We got to start educating as many people as possible about this, too. I was in a, in a lift um, in San Francisco, and uh, my, uh, my driver uh, was retiring. He was about 70 years old. He, you know, he asked me what I did, and we started talking. Uh, and he's like, so what about, what about these bots, right? What about these bot things? Can they really influence people's, um, you know, the way people think and, and, and decide and stuff like that? And I'm like, oh, oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, if nothing other than critical mass, if you just hear the same things being said over and over again, that can influence a lot of people. I mean, we've seen that all throughout history. I said, uh, right now, you can often tell a bot by its voice. And he said, oh, because it gets all like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, no, no, it's not talking to you yet. He thought, he thought when I said its voice, meaning it's writing its voice, that it meant its verbal voice. And I'm like, no, the, those bots don't quite, agree. well, at least they're ter yes, they would sound like that on like those robocall things. But I was talking specifically about the bots he had seen, we would see on Twitter and Facebook. And he's like, I, I had no idea something like that existed. I had no idea. He's like, he actually said to me, I think based on what you're telling me, my buddies and I, the guys I hang out with, I don't think we should be allowed to vote anymore. And my heart fell on that. Um, that would be a travesty of justice for people to not be allowed to vote because they don't understand the technology that they're up against. So we really got to start t uh, teaching them. Um, I, I know that there's actually, so just like I run Hack for Kids, uh, there are organizations out there that are actually uh, going to senior centers and stuff to teach seniors about tech. Um, if you see any in the area and get involved, definitely do it. Uh, so identity theft and account takeover. AI, uh, domain specific AI is great for this. It can suck up all the information about you all over the internet, tie it back to one identity, and figure out how to take over your bank account. Just like that. And usually that's all you need. Um, taking over people's bank accounts, if you have the right information, um, you, you, you might have to pay for one or two services uh, that, uh, that allow you to kind of spoof the identity along with it. Um, tons of information on how this happens. Just Google account takeover and how it's being done. It's really easy. Um, yeah, uh, so more problems. So can we as ha can hackers actually start tricking or attacking the AI itself? Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, so, so this classifier tries to identify what's in the picture. Um, some, uh, some researchers uh, created uh, a, a way to oops, a way to trick it. How do we get the uh, there we go? This is great. To trick this classifier. So yeah, definitely a banana. You put a picture of a toaster there. Uh, maybe it's a toaster. Um, but then they put a, a specifically modified photo in there, and all of a sudden, it identifies toaster. And that sticker. That little image that they've created tricks it no matter what else is in the picture. Everything that they put in front of this classifier, it thinks it's a toaster. Now, I kind of like this in some ways, because this might be valuable for the resistance movement once our rover overlords take over, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, but again, this becomes an arms race, right? As soon as the developers of the classifier realize that there's a flaw, they can try and fix the flaw, and then you have to try and find another flaw. But still, I mean, right now, in China, they're using facial recognition to text people fines for jaywalking. Now, could that happen here in the States? I don't know. We scare people enough into thinking that we need more protection from the state. It could be coming. I don't know. Got to watch out for it. Um, yeah, so uh, other attack vectors. Certainly AI can help us build better viruses. And there are probably biohackers already. Um, you can biohack the heck out of things in your own garage. You can create viruses. You can create chemical uh, form formulary um, to create uh, chemical attack weapons and other things like that. Um, and AI will help you be better at that. AI will help you find the results you're looking for so that your weapons can be um, more deadly. Um, the advancement of traditional weapons is coming. Um, Self-aiming sniper rifles isn't very far off turning just about anybody into a Lee Har Harvey Oswald, right? Uh, you can make that shot from a mile away if you have the right weapon. Um, AI is attacking AIs, probably coming. Um, I, I, I think that, uh, uh, you, in fact, we may almost have to because if independent um, 
terrorists, activists, whatever, start wanting to attack certain things, creating AIs to defend us uh, against those things is going to be critical. Um, and uh, in fact, advanced weapons, including fissiles, are becoming cheaper to manufacture and purchase, again, because of the advancements in AI helping us make those things cheaper. Um, I've heard that some of these things are even available on dark web right now. Yeah. Uh, so what's to be done? So personally, there's, there's a lot you can do, um, just for yourself. And, and that's a great place to start. I want you guys to start with yourself. Um, so um, the, the goal is definitely to plan for the best possible future, not hinder it. That doesn't mean we have to be stupid and allow anything, but let's start planning correctly. Um, so start developing safeguards. Um, I have seen multiple, in, in multiple presentations, there's all sorts of consortiums and even the IEEE is trying to put together standards, um, soft, uh, soft governance, so industry, um, industry initiatives and, and, uh, and guidelines rather than laws uh, to, try and, um, to try and get ahead of the curve. Uh, again, follow the money though. I don't, I don't know if anybody's going to listen to initiatives if there's no money to be made into adhering to it. That's why things like the GDPR are so valuable because they make it financially difficult for uh, the, the corporations to ignore. Um, definitely, definitely start encouraging privacy laws before they're all taken away from us. Um, this is, uh, this is a, a, a very bad slope we're on right now and it's just getting worse as far as I can see. Um, giving, uh, giving control of your own data back to you is going to be critical. Uh, we, we, can't, we can't allow our privacy to be drained away the way it's uh, doing now. But we also have to try to avoid fear mongering. And this is important. I mean, t when you talk to people about this stuff, make sure it's data based. Make sure you're not just saying, oh, yeah, the, the AI is going to take us all over and we're going to be Borgs by tomorrow. Um, and this, this is critical because right now there's a huge, huge backlash against intellectuals. Um, and and any time we're wrong about something, it's going to be used against us to disprove everything we might put out there, um, and and that's that's yeah that's going to be bad. Um, that one of the more interesting articles I saw though is that politicians could be replaced by AI. So maybe one of the first yeah. And how many people think that they would actually allow that to happen? Oh, it'd be awesome though. It'd be glorious. Uh, uh, well. At least initially, we'll see how it goes. But, um, but, uh, but it would at least be awesome to put a little bit of fear in their pants that they might get replaced, right? I mean, if the rest of us can be replaced by automation, why not them? Eh. Um, and, uh, and then find better ways to understand and embrace the technology appropriately like, and help other people understand it, like that Uber driver, the Lyft driver that I had who, who had never been exposed to such concepts before. Help them um, cope with it, uh, deal with it, understand it. Um, within the industry itself, so the, for those of you that are working in the, in the data science areas, this is going to be critical. Um, remember uh, that you need to start developing some of these safeguards. Remember that just about anything you developed, if you can make money off of using it for evil, it will absolutely be used for evil. It will be misused some way or another. Um, that doesn't mean you shouldn't do it. Just, just think about it. Think a little bit ahead. Um, uh, uh, encourage, again, the soft governments and, and these industry initiatives. Um, for those that are actually developers, check out OWASP.org. That is uh, the, the list of the top 10 vulnerabilities in, um, in uh, web applications. And uh, I mean, uh, mitigating that SQL injection that I told you about, it's super easy. Yeah, there's like two or three ways you can mitigate it. And, and you, know, you, you just have to like cut and paste some code. It's that easy, and yet it is still the number way, one way people attack uh, web applications. Um, and then support initiatives like Partnership on AI, Future of Humanity Institute, all these things that are trying to at least be thought tanks to think out ahead into the future a little bit so we can get ahead of uh, the game there and not be standing right at the edge of that precipice. Um, the education system, too, needs to be st start thinking about this. Um, we certainly need to start teaching people how to be critical thinkers. Um, I, I, I somehow, uh, there's been a lot of that that's been lost, and we need to get that back into education, probably at the lower ends, certainly at the higher ends. Um, um, and we can also start looking at you, AI to increase the effectiveness of education itself. Um, we can start analyzing the success rates of students and their career, the path that they're taking. Um, right now, I understand that um, the only thing they're typically analyzing um, with most graduates is what their first job is. 
and we stop there. And um, for those of you that not have graduated, for the most of us, we, we don't end up in a career that our degree was designed for. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a fact of life. Most people end up uh, going on to something else. So where is your education most likely going to make you successful um, would be a great way to use the AI. Um, uh, if, uh, if, and, and then let's put some pressure on Facebook and Google to allow higher ed to do that. Uh, if, if any, if any or, uh, corporation can buy that data, um, and start analyzing it for whatever they want, why shouldn't we be able to analyze it for our students to give them paths that might be successful for them? Um, uh, using AI to deliver new learning methods and new incentives I think is gonna be critical. We said there was a couple talks uh, this week about how, um, how interacting with technology is changing the way our neurons fire, is changing the way our brains are mapped. Well, if the brain is changing, we gotta figure out new ways for that brain to learn, right? Um, and then I, I think it's going to be really important to figure out a way to make critical education paths affordable. Um, and, and what I mean by that, who remembers this? Who remembers Sim Earth? Um, it was a game that came, yeah, awesome. Um, game that came out in, uh, in like 1990. Um, and the whole goal was is you had a planet and you had to create the right conditions for life to occur and then allow that life to, um, to, uh, to build and become more intelligent and, and eventually even take off into, uh, into space and, and populate other uh, planets. Um, and there was one aspect of it that was really quite genius. So uh, you could put your energy and all sorts, your points basically, into building anything you wanted on this planet, into science and agriculture and stuff like that. But there was a bucket for philosophy. And if you didn't put any points into philosophy, the people would kill each other um, and, uh, and the planet would die. Um, and we've kind of forgotten about that. And that's a little bit what I'm talking about, about this critical path. Because right now, philosophy majors are in the decline. Um, at a time when we're going to have to start deciding what is life, right? If things start becoming sentient, at what point is it life? Who's going to help us decide that? And right now, I got to tell you, if I told you know, if most people told uh, other people that they were philosophy majors, a lot of people would chuckle and go, "Yeah, yeah, yeah good, good luck with that." Um, and uh, and I think it's on the decline because you don't get paid a whole lot for it. I mean, maybe maybe if you're all the way up at a doctorate level and you're teaching it, you don't get paid a ton for it. And it getting a doctorate in it is freaking expensive, and it didn't used to be. I think we used to have more philosophers back when. College tuition was $150 a semester, right? You weren't, it wasn't that big of an investment to go learn about philosophy. Um, we're gonna need those people. We're gonna need people in philosophy. We're gonna need people uh, very educated in ethics to, to help navigate a path for us. Um, so, uh, so globally, yeah, we've gotta learn how to uh, treat this as any other advanced weaponry. Um, there's bans on chemical weapons. There's bans on bioweapons. Um, should there be bans on AI weapons? We should think about this before they actually get created. Um, and, and it has to start soon. Again, we're about five years behind. Um, and uh, I love this, uh, this quote by uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson. Um, Time to start behaving, like treating each other well, because uh, when our robot overlords uh, come, they hopefully will have reasons not to exterminate us. Um, but, uh, but if we don't, I mean, this is, this is how close the doomsday clock is right now, just for nuclear weapons. And, Nuclear weapons are not owned by everybody, right? Um, uh, AI weapons, I can make. I can put right here and go, click, and there's my weapon. So, uh, so if, if brinksmanship required um, uh, this to, to kind of help measure and control it, um, where, where does AI weapons put uh, all of this? Um, and, and what kind of perspective do we need to handle it? Um, so, this could be the payoff, right? The warm, fuzzy payoff is I'm seeing a lot of amazing potential in what people are talking about. AI and AI in conjunction with bio as well and how the two can help out. And, um, and who, I mean, who knows, maybe AI helps us all ascend and become higher beings. Wouldn't that be freaking awesome? Um, but until then, we've got to be on guard, really freaking on guard, because there's going to be a lot changing really fast. And if we're not ahead of the game, we're, we're going to be screwed. Um, so, uh, yep, um, so to end this with um, Dennis Gabor, Nobel in physics, uh, got, a, got his Nobel for his work in holography. Um, we can't predict the future, um, and, and it's true, as I was doing my research on this, I was like, there's just too many crazy possible outcomes. 
But we can invent it, um, and that should be the goal we're striving for right now, is to invent our own future. Um, and that's it. Um, and uh, do we have time for questions? No? No questions? I'll, I, I can talk to you guys out there if you want. Yeah. Sorry I went over a little bit. Yeah.